Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I've got a new scary prophecy. Scary not in a good way. Now, if you're looking for the end times, if you're looking for Jesus to return, if you want this thing to be over, then you're going to like this prophecy. If you want to live in the world where you, know, you get to go to the restaurants, you can go out to ball games, you can go have a good time, then you might not like this prophecy so much. First of all, as I reminded you the other day, we did not reach our goal. And so if perhaps you intended to give, maybe you forgot to give, didn't get around to it, if God has blessed you and you can help us, now would be a really good time. All right. Now, I'm going to explain this at the end of the prophecy, but so that you can kind of get a grip on it, here's what we're talking about. So here we are in January, and of course it's cold in January. And then probably in the ballpark of March, depends on where you live, the grass starts to get green somewhere in there. The county of the Omer is from uh, April 25th to June the 13th. So that's in here, those 49 days here. That means that probably, if this is the year, the Palestinian state will come in somewhere in this ballpark, and then shortly after, a New Madrid earthquake somewhere in that ballpark. The election is out here. Now, with that in mind, let's go into the prophecy. We could go forth Parnell. Now, I have one person that every time I put her on, emails with some kind of bad comment. Does not believe this lady is hearing from God. And I don't, as I've said this before, I don't think that everything from every person is of God. Even Leslie says she's missed it. I know I've missed it, okay? So I put things on that I believe are of God, and this one, there is no question. As we go through this, you're going to see that flesh and blood could not have come up with this. All right, so anyway, she lists out she had this thing three times, this dream three times. The, the dream began in pitch black. There was nothing but blackness all around. Then I heard from the heavens, Amos 8-9. Amos 8-9, I explained, still fully in the dark. What does it say? I asked. I can't see anything, nor am I able to read if I could see. Suddenly, I saw one single candle flickering in the dark. The light instantly seemed to drive back the shadows of the darkness, and I heard again, Amos 8-9. But then out of nowhere, a holy Bible was handed me, and it's open to Amos 8, 9, and I heard the voice from heaven say, Read it out loud. Okay, I replied. Amos 8, 9. And it should come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Oh, I said in surprise, and then continued, Lord God, is it this time now? Then the scene changed. I found myself standing outside looking up into the night sky. I'm quite perplexed because I see three moons. That's very important. Remember that. Three moons in the sky. Three moons, I exclaimed. How can that be? There are three distinct moons. I counted them out loud. I could see them clearly. One, two, three. Then I felt like walking. As I do, I noticed it's cold and I see snow. That's important. Got it? Three moons. It's cold. Suddenly I have a coat around me and gloves on my hands as I walk through the night that turns to day. And then vice versa continually. In other words, there are several days and nights. I walk through several nights and days, stopping to look up at the night sky once again. It's cold enough. I can see my breath. That's important. Now, one of the three months moons is fading in the sky. What? I exclaim. What's happening to the other moon? I ask out loud. Keep walking. I heard a voice from the heavens say, I shrugged my shoulders and said, okay. I continued walking through the nights and the days, meaning that it's several nights, several days from one, new moon, from one moon into the next. Okay. Three days and time seemed to swiftly pass by, and I paused for a moment thinking. I've been walking for quite a few days and nights, and I'm con am, am I continue, I ask out loud. I looked up into the sky for once again, as the time before me I felt compelled to stop in the night hours. I looked up, and to my surprise, there were now only two moons. That's important. Now in the sky, two moons. 
One of the moons seems as if it was totally faded from my view. Am I walking through time? I ask out loud, but no answer came. I looked around to see if anyone was still seeing the two moons, although one seemed fainter than the other. Nope. It's just me and all of heaven here. I felt compelled to begin walking again through nights and days. The temperature is getting warmer. That's important, too. Okay, so there's three moons. The first two moons have gone. Now it's getting warmer. I stopped to look up at the sky again. Oh, I love to look at the night sky with all the stars and the moon shining brightly. The moon, I exclaimed. Wait, there's only one now that I can see. I walked on into the light of the day and noticed a sprig of grass, green grass, and the air is no longer so bitter cold. Now, is this spread over three years? I want to believe that. I wish it were that, but I'm afraid to say it's probably talking about three moons as in three months. I want it to be <laughs> saying three years, but I'm afraid once you see this, there's not another way to calculate it but three months. But what now, I ask? I heard a voice from the heavens speak again. Before the third moon arrives, your Amos 8-9 moment occurs. What did that just say? That just said within three months. Now, the way it's worded, it didn't tell us exactly how many weeks. It didn't tell us exactly how many, how many days, nor did it tell us the time of the month. It is, says generally in the ballpark of about three, and I want to even say three or four months. I mean, depends on exactly how this is all calculated. So just to be safe, let's say three or four months, but I want it on the record. I prefer to think it's three to four years, okay? But what it's saying, you can't get around more than three or four months. I looked up into the sky, realizing what was to come. Then I felt compelled to ask, what happens when the moon arrives? Now, <clears throat> before I go on, I need to explain what a skiff is. See this thing here? That is a skiff. It's used to swing like this to bring in rye or wheat or something. It's used to cut things down. Now, Back in the Middle Ages, I'm going to show you an article here in just a second. They used to say that during the time of the Black Death, during the time of the great pandemics they had, they used to see these people standing out in their fields with this in their hand. Now, they believed that it was a skith. They believed that it was for harvest. I don't think so, because one of the best ones saw that there was actually a smoke coming out of it. I believe that it is probably an angel standing there with a staff, and out of the staff he is releasing virus or bacteria to kill people, to bring judgment to God. Now, it can be something to cut the wheat and things like that. But in most cases, the skith means death, pestilence, pandemic. I'll show you. Suddenly I saw a black-robed figure with a long skith in one hand, a massive sword in the other. Okay, sword? So both of those are killing instruments. One is pestilence or pandemic. The other one is war. A massive sword in the other. I'm seeing now before me a great sprawling city. Huh, most of the prophecies about a big city is talking about New York City. The black-robed figure files or flies and passes from house to house. Now, notice it goes house to house. In other words, it's not just something that hits every house, covers a whole nation, covers a whole state or a whole city. It's specific from house to house. The black-robed figure flies and passes from house to house while skipping over some. We've heard many prophecies say, that those that are walking with Jesus will not be touched. I heard wails and terrible screaming, and my face drained of all its color. I believe it's pestilence. I believe it's pandemic. I looked it up, and this article said, Dread the Grim Reaper, an early warning strategy as a means of plague prevention. Hospital Malta's fight against contagion. The article goes on to say, Plague, 
brought social disruption and physical devastation on a large scale in pre-industrial society and a socioeconomic impact on the society of a pestilence in the Mediterranean world and beyond from antiquity up to the 19th century. The analysis of the outbreak and spread, the biological origins of the disease, how it spread across territories along trading and maritime routes, meaning this sign primarily means pestilence or pandemic. Uh, I also want to jump in here and just say, if you have not got wheat, specifically wheat, I think you're missing it. Because what was it that fed the, the world for seven years? It wasn't corn, it wasn't rice, it wasn't beans, it was wheat. Yes, I know if you go into the scriptures, there's one place where it says corn. But if you look that up in the Hebrew, and I have, corn in those days was simply referred to as any grain. In other words, it's not what we call corn today. And I believe it was wheat. Ron Wyatt says what he found there was wheat. Big bins full of wheat. So I think if you haven't got wheat, then I think you don't get it. That is the thing. That is God's famine food. So I would encourage you to go to Joseph's Kitchen and get yourself some wheat. Why Joseph's Kitchen? Because there's thousands of varieties of wheat. If you get the wrong one, then it won't make bread. The ones they have actually, matter of fact, I approve them. <laughs> For they buy them, I approve buying that wheat. So I, I made bread with that wheat from Joseph Kitchen. All right, let's go on. I also want to remind you that <laughs> we have some big active prophecies heading our way. The dollar's going to fall. I'd recommend you go to prophecyclubgold.com for that. 14, say a food shortage is coming, Joseph Kitchen. 17, say a meter tsunami and earthquake. Also, I'll send you josephkitchen.com for that. Suitcase nukes, I'd send you to empshield.com to get you one of these so your car will still start when the suitcase nukes go off. we got 34 prophecies saying suitcase nukes are coming. More than all the rest of them combined. It's a big deal. It's coming. All right, so back to the prophecy. So she says, oh no, I whispered and said, the time of the destroyer has come. Ah, Jesus, ah, Jesus, I cried out and I fell to my knees on the cold ground. Okay, so what just happened? We went from cold to green grass back to cold. I want to believe it's not three months. I want to believe it's three or four years. But it's hard to get around the possibility is it could be as soon as three or four months. The cold ground makes me want to think, oh, no, we just skipped another year. I, but again, it's unclear. Again, I heard the voice from heaven speaking out loud these words, warn my people that the time of sorrow has come. Now, our has come and God's has come are not exactly the same. Our has come, we look at the watch. God's has come, days a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. His clock moves a lot slower. The plague's returned. The plagues return. Darkness falls, the destruction, the destroyer, the destroyer is what I should say, comes amidst the tide of so much more. What's it saying? It's saying that this time we're not talking about a COVID thing. We're not talking about something that man created in a lab. We're not talking about something that man sprayed around this time. This time, we're talking about a plague from God, from heaven. He goes on to say, I looked up into the heavens again, and there there I saw a face in the moon. It belongs to the man, Antichrist, the man of sin. As I stared at the odd sight, with my mouth open, I heard the same voice say from the heavens again, speaking to me, saying, Warn my people, this is the now time of the now it's twice now, twice, okay, of the season of now, that's three times, I have foretold about. So he's kind of saying, look, guys, this is, this is really it. Now, that was the end of the dream. However, as you know, she then goes on to give verses that she was given, and I think in this case, the verses are very important because it's a confirmation to help us to understand what was said in I guess it was a dream, maybe it was a vision. Anyway, she says, So I asked my lovely Jesus Christ for confirmation. He gave me 2 Samuel, the whole last chapter 24. And it came to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon 
and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Skipping. Surely, little God would do nothing except he revealeth his secret to his servants, the prophets. Skipping to the next one. I've sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. I think that's the big thing. In other words, A, this is a pestilence from God. This is a pestilence as it was in the days of Egypt. In other words, this is nothing like COVID. This is going to be a big, bad one, okay? I sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. You young men have a slain with the sword and have taken away your horses and have made the stink of your camps to come up into your nostrils, yet you have not returned to me, saith the Lord. God has taken away a lot. He's taken away our dollar down. All kinds of bad things happen to America, yet we have not returned to the Lord. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? Okay, yeah, that's the day of the Lord, but this is not talking about the day of the Lord, but it is talking about darkness. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Then we go to Exodus 10.21. Darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. In other words, this is the three days of darkness that I think it's two or three other people have been told. A thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. So God is going to take care of those who truly walk in holiness with him. I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt or the land of America, not all of them, but both man and beast and against the gods of Egypt I will execute, execute judgment. The blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. It's the same blood. Then it was the blood of, of lambs and goats and bulls. Well, excuse me, specifically a lamb. But today it's the lamb of God, as in Jesus. I will pass over you, and the plague shall, the plague shall not be upon you, and to destroy you, those that have the blood of Jesus. And at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. It's not going to be that way, but there's going to be a lot of people killed. What the warning is, there's a big bad plague coming like we've never seen, not in, not in modern times. There was not a house where there was not one dead. Well, what the prophecy said, house to house, skipping some, praise God. Now, let me go back to this. <clears throat> so here's the election coming up in November. This is the starting of the count of of Omer, which is 49 days from Pentecost to, excuse me, from first fruits to Pentecost, which is uh, April 25th to June mm, 13th. So the cold would be here as in right now. The green grass would be in here, but then she dropped her knees. It was cold again. So I want to believe that it's a whole nother year later, but that's optimistic. I'm trying to be optimistic. I want to believe that this is not talking about months. I want to believe this is talking about years. In other words, like three years from now. If you want to believe that, just go right ahead. But I'm afraid, I'm afraid it's probably three to four months in that ballpark, and I'm not setting a date. Lord knows you set a date in the world of Bible prophecy, and the forgiving Christians don't forgive you, okay? So you can't miss. And I, I can appreciate that. But anyway, let's go on. Now, let me jump to a dream that I had. I think it's very important. God specifically told me, by the anointing touch, put this in there. So this is October 12th, 20, 2006. I woke up out of a dream. I've talked about it many times. And I was looked down, and I saw a plane. The plane was about this long. Of course, it's a full plane. And there was stairs, and there was a line of people. And I heard a voice. And it said, two men will get on a plane with a virus. And before the plane can land, everyone on board will be dead. This will be the beginning of the end of public air transportation. And I said, what? And the voice rebuked me. And it said, you weren't listening, as my wife often says. <laughs> I have a problem listening. Two people will get on a plane. said it again. Two people will get on a plane with a virus. And before the plane can land, everyone on board will be dead. This will be the beginning of the end of public air transportation. Meaning, I think this virus is talking about that. Now, what do I think? Why, why do I think God told me that? I think that that's the time that these prices on stock for airlines are going to fall drastically. And probably that's the time 
when I'll be buying an airline. Now, I don't have the money to buy an airline yet, but then I don't have the money to drill for oil in Israel. But God told me he's going to give me the money to drill for oil in Israel. So I assume he'll also give me the money to buy an airline so I can fly Christians and Jews back to Israel. Okay, let's go on. 2021, I had another dream. This dream, I just got off of an airplane, and I walked down the stairs, walked across the tarmac, and as I was walking by, there was an old lady sitting there at a table. And as I walked by, she started laughing, this evil, high-pitched, tee-hee-hee laugh. And all of a sudden, the Lord spoke to my heart, and I knew what was going on. I walked over to her, and I said, you already have the vaccine. And she looked up, another wicked, evil laugh, saying, yes. Then she said, the plane you just got off of, before it lands, everyone, everyone on board will be dead. Now that's two dreams, same incident. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. Talking about the darkness, we now have three, maybe four people talking about three days of darkness coming. So I hope you're getting it here. Now I'm going to try to get this in too. <clears throat> February 2020. <clears throat> now, you're going to want to say, oh, well, this is talking about the COVID thing. No, I'll show you. It's not. It's talking about the next bad pan pandemic coming. In this vision, the radio talk show host became very serious in his tone and stated that it was being reported that several large cities were in lockdown. Again, we want to say, oh, this is past. No, I'll show you it hasn't. We're in lockdown because the virus... That was now rampant and mutating. Now that part we could say, okay, you'll get it, but no, I'll show you. People weren't being ordered to stay inside their homes or apartments, and I saw what looked like a riot taking place. Parking lots jammed, packed, vehicles, car doors left wide open, people all over wildly running about. We didn't see that. We didn't see it. I watched people running as fast as they could in almost every direction, screaming, shouting hysterically. I observed, I was observing complete and utter chaos and hysteria. Not one person was calm. We didn't see that. All were running about, yelling, screaming, and crying. I asked, what's going on? The National Guard were planning martial law, advising, advising everyone they have to stay in their homes. He told me that nearly all the store shelves were empty of food, water, and other goods. He said that the people in the stores were acting like crazed rabbit animals, throwing cans of food at each other and stealing each other's carts. I went in, and it was complete chaos, wild fighting. People at the checkout lines yelling, screaming at the cashiers because their debit and credit cards were not working in the machines, and they had no cash. Prophecyclubgold.com. They specialize in IRAs, 401ks, where you actually hold the metal in your hand, but you still have the IRA or the 401k. People began to bypass the registers and just run out of the stores without paying for the food in their carts. I saw people attacking people who were running out with food, waiting mobs of people grabbed and beat the people who were leaving the store with food, taking all of their food and leaving the people injured and lying on the ground. We didn't see that. Means it's coming. Shells emptied in minutes like a pack of ravenous wolves, frenzied sharks fighting over food. It was unbelievable to watch this take place. Everything in the store destroyed, doors pulled off refrigerators, freezers, sections broken, thrown down to the floor, shoving in as pushed over, knocked over, broken up. There was no food left at all anywhere on the shelves. Everything totally gone. Josephskitchen.com, I'm telling you. Look, most of these long-term storage foods, you're talking nine, ten thousand dollars to feed one person for one year. Joseph Kitchen can show you how to do it for about a thousand dollars. Not excuse me, what did I say? Ten thousand, nine, ten thousand, feeding one person one year, Joseph Kitchen, one thousand, one person one year. I don't know of a place that can beat it. People began running back to the stock room, searching more food, stir, store cleared out. They began clearing all of the boxes, pallets apart, looking for food. Many boxes contained paper, paper products and cleaning supplies. That was all thrown aside. They were just mad frenzy looking for food. I saw them find to take pet food because it was still food. They acted like they hit the jackpot when they found dog food. I saw people 
from local churches, terrified looks on their faces, crying because they were too late. There was nothing left. I asked, well, why didn't you prepare for this? After all, many watchmen have been warning for years this was to come. I thought we would be gone before anything bad happened, they said. I love my pre-tribbers. I love you, but you're wrong. People were fighting over what little remained. We began to hear gunshots. Bullets began flying everywhere. Many people were being hit. No one came to their aid. They just left dying and bleeding on the floor. Other people taking food items from the people who had been shot, running out of the store. Clerks all running away for the fear of their lives. People taking anything that was not tied down that they could carry out. Walmart? War zone, gun battles in the store and parking lot. People dead, dying, people running into TJ Maxx, the dollar store, to buy into the small food sections. People even ran into the movie theater, fighting over popcorn and candy. It seemed as if in one hour, everything had gone from normal to complete and utter chaos and insanity. Why? Pandemic. I was then reminded by the Lord that he had told me about many times about the past several years that this would be the case. That life as we knew it would change suddenly. Change suddenly. In other words, if you're not already prepared for this in the good days, in the sunshine days, in the days of the storm, you're going to be like everybody else, biting your nails, scratching and clawing for food. I saw National Guard vehicles arriving. They quickly swooped in and shot everyone who was seen holding a weapon. The clampdown had begun. No one would be allowed on the street. Everyone must stay inside and be shot. Look, I've said it many times. If you can't stay inside the four walls of your house for one year, having food and water and whatnot, you're in trouble. You are in trouble. Get prepared. The vision ended. I heard the Lord say, why haven't you prepared? Why haven't you prepared? So, I'd recommend, brothers and sisters, that you get prepared. Ask Jesus to forgive your sins. Prophecyclubgold.com Josephkitchen.com EMPshield.com Promo code PROPHECY I recommend if you want to have your wealth not lost, if you've got it in an IRA, if you've got it in a 401k, if you've got it in a bank, if your wealth is in paper, as Lindsay Williams said, it's worth the paper it's written on. In other words, it's about to be worthless. So I'll send you to prophecyclubgold.com. You can also reach them, call 800-200-4653. 800-200-4653. They'll give you some ideas on what to do. That is their job to help you not lose your wealth. I also recommend you go to josephkitchen.com. Get yourself a machine package. That's the wherewithal to grind the wheat berries into flour. Put those into a bread machine with five other ingredients. Push about two hours or 40 minutes later and have a nice hot loaf of whole wheat bread. I've had many people email me. They absolutely love the bread. They love the whole idea. And see, because it's long-term storage food. And as in the days of Pharaoh, what fed the world for seven years? It was wheat. I believe wheat is God's food for famines, for God's famine food. It is, there is no perfect one food a person could eat for their whole lifetime and be totally healthy. But in my opinion, bread may come the closest. I mean, why does God call us the wheat? (laughs) Wheat and the tares, okay. I think it's because the primary thing we're supposed to be eating is wheat. So go there, and then after you get the machine package, that's all of the mechanical things to make the bread, then you decide how much food you want. By the way, most of your long-term storage food, you're talking nine or ten thousand dollars to feed one person for one year. Did you get that? Nine to ten thousand dollars, one person one year. Joseph Kitchen can show you how to do it. For about a thousand dollars per person, we're not talking about half price. We're not talking about eighty percent less. We're talking about like ninety percent less than what the other people can tell you that they can get you long-term storage for. 
I do not know of anybody that can beat that. This is an actual loaf of bread that I actually made. I, I eat bread. I mean, it's, it's, I also have to say that um, it's brought my cholesterol down. It's brought, brought my blood pressure down. And that I don't get hungry as often. I typically will have a slice for breakfast and a slice for lunch and then a normal meal for whatever. And I've lost uh, what oh, 30 pounds over the last year. And in my opinion, I think the primary thing is that did it was, of course, watching what I eat and, you know, all the other things, but bread. So I eat bread as the primary source. And it's also, it'll reduce your food budget, too. Anyway, go check it out. So what is an EMP Shield device? It's a device you can put on your car and your house that in an EMP attack is supposed to stop the attack. And if you go to empshield.com, and if you use the promo code PROPHECY, they give you a $50 discount. They also have videos up there. Shows you how to install it on your car and your house and everything. And it's not difficult at all. I've got one of them right here. Red goes to red. Black goes to black. Green goes to the car, uh, body of your car. And you just peel it off the back, stick it under there. Got another device that goes on your house. So, not complicated. Take you about 10 minutes to put them in. So, empshield.com promo code is prophecy.